People always ask me how I find and book certain trips, but the thing is I'm always using the same handful of websites, so in no particular order I thought I'd share them with you. My first website is STA Travel. Now I'm pretty sure that every student backpacker has heard of STA, but it's a great place for everything to do with travel, flights, hotels, accommodation, tours, even insurance and work abroad, things like that. They often have some pretty great deals on certain tours or destinations, and although it's aimed at students, people of any age can book onto most of the trips. If you're planning a gap year, this would be a great place to start. They have all the information you need. You can get inspired on where you want to go, you can have multi-stop flights, just get an idea of what you want to be doing and how much it's going to cost. Next on the list is Skyscanner. Skyscanner is my go-to for finding cheap flights. It's basically a compare the market confused.com website for comparing flight prices. Uh, it takes all the different deals and everything from all the different websites and basically puts them onto one site. I would recommend finding the cheapest price, going onto that website, copying it and then going to STA because they do a price guarantee. So it means that you're not going to go through any dodgy sites but this is a way to get the price down on your actual flights. They also do hotels and car hire but I haven't actually used those features. One feature that I do really like is you can choose your home airport and then you can click flexible and search anywhere in the world. So it starts from the cheapest flight going to the most expensive and it just gives you a general idea of where are the cheapest places to go at the moment in terms of flights. Number three is TripAdvisor. Now I'm pretty sure that most travellers, if not all, will have heard of this website, but I am always using it to plan a trip, from restaurants, things to do, places to see, anything like that. This is a great website to plan a basic itinerary and just know what you want to see from a certain location. Once you've picked what you actually want to do, you can also head straight to the website, there's usually a link in the description, and you can probably book it online there, so it's just a great website that keeps everything together. Another feature that I really like is that you can search a certain country and then go to the popular destinations. This is just a great thing to do if you're not familiar with where you want to be in a certain country. The more touristy areas are mentioned first, but if you want to travel off the beaten track a little bit, then you can just search for a few more destinations and get an idea of where you want to go in terms of that as well. All of the hotels, restaurants and activities are all reviewed in some depth and it just means that you can make sure that you have a better chance of having a really great time while you're out there. But the main reason I wanted to mention this website is that recently it said it wasn't going to advertise anything that caused harm to animals, so no elephant rides, no lion interactions, things like that. So it basically means that the tours that you are going to go on, if it does involve animals, then it is going to be more ethical than not. So it's just a good idea to have a look on there as well. At number four, it's Tour Raider. Um, I actually only found this website quite recently. It's a great website for comparing all those travel tours from G Adventures, Intrepid, and Toucan, and things like that. I know these can get a bit more expensive, but they're great if you're nervous about traveling. And this website just kind of lets you make sure that you're not getting ripped off and paying more than what you should be for a certain tour. If you're looking in a specific region, then some of the tours do get quite similar, but it means that you can find one tour that's £800, one tour that's £600, but it's basically offering the same thing. So it is a great way to save you a lot of money. And because these tours are accommodation included and things like that, they actually can turn out to be fairly good value for money. Number five is Rome to Rio. Now, this website can help you get anywhere, pretty much. There's a couple of bus routes that it doesn't know, but that is very limited indeed. Basically, it can help you fly, train, bus to anywhere in the world. So if I was planning a multi-stop trip around Vietnam, for example, then I could know whether I could get the train, bus, or a flight to a certain place that I wanted to go. It also gives me a predicted price about how much the tickets will cost. I've found that it does tend to overestimate some of the flights, particularly the smaller flights from country to country that only last an hour or so, so Skyscanner would be a great idea to check them, but it's a good idea just to get a general idea of the budget. If you're going interrailing, going on a gap year, or even if you're just a planning nut like I am, then Rome to Rio allows you to save multiple multi-stop trips, so you can plan it out and know exactly where you're going from A to B on all your different destinations. You do have to create an account for this feature, but like all the other websites, they're free to use and I really would recommend doing it if you did want to save multiple different trips. Another really popular website is Pinterest. Now, I'm mentioning this one because a lot of people use it but don't realise how good it is for planning travel. 
It's great for getting inspiration on a different country or finding travel hacks and things like that. It's just a really nice clean website that lets you organize things exactly how you want to, so by location, by country or by break. It's also a good way to get a feel of a place, so if you're not sure whether somewhere's right for you, search it on Pinterest and you'll just get an idea about what the place looks like and the general things that you can be doing. Do be warned though, it's kind of Instagrammy in the sense that some places can look nicer on Pinterest than they actually are. So maybe Google things as well, and also look on TripAdvisor for the general things to do. Also, if you find a great website or a great tour, activity, anything like that, and you really don't want to forget it, you can add your own pin. Just add the URL in and it will let you save a particular picture from that web page. The next website that I use is Booking.com. Now I know a lot of backpackers also recommend Hostel World. They are pretty much in competition with each other. This is the one that I tend to prefer. It does have everything from hostels up to the five star hotels. So it has everything that you could want. Everything's rated and they do highlight the things that they know travelers care about. On every description of a hotel, it's very clear as to whether breakfast is included, whether there's free Wi-Fi, or even if it's free to cancel. Customising the search is really easy and you can book well in advance or you can book in short notice as well. They also have an app which is really useful because it means if you're travelling from hostel to hostel you can just show your booking through your phone unless stated otherwise. The last website I'd recommend taking a look at is Workaway. This is great for backpackers who are travelling on a budget. It's basically where you can work in exchange for room and board. There's a variety of different jobs you can do and you can narrow your search from the search bar or from the suggested options. Let's say you love working with animals or you want to teach English. This is a great place to find families or companies that are looking for some help. Now, although I haven't taken advantage of this opportunity yet, I will be doing so for an upcoming gap year. Until then, all of the hosts are rated and some of the hosts even rate the users. Meaning that if you're a good worker and you get a good review, it's easier to find a good place in the future. If you find a host that you're interested in, just click on the link and you'll find when they're looking for work, what kind of work they'll be looking for, and what kind of accommodation you can expect in exchange. Now, although the website is free to browse through, you do have to pay to contact any of the hosts. It's $29 for the year, or if you want to have a couple membership where you'd go together and travel together, then that would be $38 US a year. I think this would be worth it, even if you were only going to do it for a week or two out of the year, given that you're getting your room and possibly your food for free. Thank you for watching, I hope this video has been helpful. As much as I wish I was, I'm not actually sponsored by any of these websites. They are genuine recommendations. Please like and subscribe and take a look at some of my other travel videos. Or if you'd like to keep up with me, follow me on Instagram for my latest travel destination.